Hi, everybody. This is Adam Ellenboss from Nightlight Astrology, and these are January sun and rising sign horoscopes. We're taking a look in this video at the sun and rising sign horoscopes for Leo. So let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to put your chart up on the screen. So this month, um, to keep things a little bit more condensed and a little bit more concise, because um, I am already behind on delivering these thanks to uh, New Year holidays and uh, finishing up my annual Kickstarter. So I want to get these out uh, as, in a, as timely and uh, quick as I can. So I'm, I'm uh, condensing the way that I do things a little bit. So month begins in your sixth house. There's a lot of focus on your sixth house this month. This is all transits happening in Capricorn. The beginning of the month starts off with a Sun-Saturn conjunction. On the fifth, there's a solar eclipse in Capricorn in your sixth house. 10th, 11th, you have a, a Sun-Pluto conjunction. Uh, you've got Mercury entering Capricorn and making a square to Mars on the 8th. Uh, in Aries, in your ninth house, you have a square from, uh, or a conjunction from Mercury to Saturn in Capricorn on the 12th and 13th. By the 21st or so, Mars in Aries will square um, uh, Mars and Aries will square Saturn and Capricorn. So there's, you could say overall, one of the main focuses of the month is a 6,000 Capricorn, but also quite frankly, the square to, um, to Aries, Mars and Aries in the ninth. Uranus is also turning direct in Aries in your ninth house at the very start of the month, first week or so of, of January. So this is a, a, a sixth house, ninth house kind of month but it's really a sixth house kind of year because over the course of the next year, you're going to have a lot, a lot of eclipses falling into Capricorn in your sixth house. Saturn is moving toward a conjunction with Pluto in your sixth house. So there's just a lot of focus there. What does that mean? Well, the sixth house was traditionally called the joy of Mars and it was uh, called the house of bad fortune. It was related to uh, work, toil, drudgery, chronic illness, disease, fatigue, slavery, and like uh, hard workers, um, laborers. Uh, also is related in some ways, kind of agricultural related to things like farm, farm workers, things like that. Um, <clears throat> but basically the sixth house was also related to military training and to sickness. So it has the sense of being about hard, difficult Mars-like conditions in life but also about fighting for things that you really care about or being in service to something. I know the military isn't the ideal of service that a lot of people have, but when you sacrifice something of yourself for a cause or a mission or a purpose that you're passionate about, that is also kind of considered a Mars ruled thing. So the sixth house is related to all of those things. And that's where the focus is. So when you pair that with the ninth house, which is about higher education, religion, philosophy, long journeys, foreign places, sometimes you get the theme of service work in foreign places. You get the theme of putting your philosophies, beliefs, religious or spiritual practices into some kind of practical everyday service or work in the world. Sometimes you get challenges, difficulties, or hardships in relation to learning, teachers, education, beliefs, or spirituality there's a variety of things that can kind of come through. Sometimes you have sickness, difficulties, and how your faith helps you with those, or how you are facing difficulties or hardships with uh, teachers or within religious organizations or things like that. Well, there's some different things to think about and get, kind of, you know, uh, put you on the, the right path in terms of just what kind of symbolism to be thinking about this month. Now, when you look at the other big transit of the month, you've got a totally different dynamic going on at the same time. It's very different, in fact, much more expansive, imaginative, dreamy, inspiring. On the, about the 13th of the month, Jupiter in Sagittarius in the fifth house will square Neptune in Pisces in the eighth. First of all, Jupiter in Sagittarius in the fifth house is you know, a bit like a party. Fifth house is a house of creativity, joy, um, playfulness, children, pregnancy, certain degree it's associated with sexuality um, uh, or at least kind of romance, um, sensuality, pleasure. It was called the house of good fortune and it was called the joy of Venus. So a lot of sort of uh, creative, expansive, growth oriented, exciting themes there, maybe a little hedonistic, a little over the top, um, but square to Neptune in the eighth house, uh, 
very interesting, right? The eighth house, the house of other people's money, other people's resources. So you want to be careful about at right around this time about, you know, um, waste, like you could see themes of wastefulness in a partner's life or related to a partner's spending habits. You could see themes of borrowing or asking for money from other people for things that are sort of frivolous. So you want to be careful of that kind of stuff. Um, you could also see themes of basically the eighth house is also associated with idleness and with things that we come to, uh, it's, it was associated with penalties and things that we come to have to pay for later, like debt, taxes, but karmic penalties as well. So you want to be careful about this kind of, it's a very inspiring, artistic, kind of uplifting Jupiter in the fifth, square to Neptune in the eighth. Be careful that you're not going over the top with anything that you could have to pay for later, basically. Um, fifth house, eighth house dynamic is also about finding beauty in the darkness, uh, finding creative ways of joining yourself with other people in order to do things that are exciting. So some kind of collaborative, creative uh, energy going on there too. Um, then from here on the 21st, uh, you're going to see big lunar eclipse in your home sign. So you've been going through personal changes for a while now with eclipses falling in your home sign. They've also been falling in the seventh house of relationships. You've been going through quite a period of time in your life where these topics are really uh, in the spotlight. The lunar eclipse in your first house on the 21st is kind of bringing things to, um, it's like the grand finale of all of the eclipses, a total lunar eclipse in your home sign, your first house, one final uh, emphasis on personal change. This could have to do with health, with new beginnings. Eclipses eclipse things and bring endings. They shift our direction or our life focus. Um, they tell us what's important and what's not. Very, very personal eclipse in your first house around the 21st. Its effects will play out over the next few months. You're going to see a more substantive, deep personal changes coming through, especially like, who am I? What am I doing with my life? Where am I going? What do I want and need? What makes my heart feel happy? Um, am I healthy? These are very important questions for you right now. Then on the 22nd, you're going to see Venus get together with Jupiter in the fifth house. This is very joyful, expansive, possibly grandiose and indulgent. Be a little bit careful of that. But otherwise, Venus, Jupiter in the fifth brings a kind of romantic... Um, aura, and it also brings benefits, sometimes benefits from women, the, the goddess Venus joining with Jupiter. So you see sort of expansion and growth and creativity and sensuality. It can go a little over the top. Again, you have to be careful of that, but otherwise really beautiful transit that should be pretty uplifting considering all of the, you know, the, there's a lot of more, there's a lot more intense things coming through this month. So it's nice way to end the month at any rate, at any rate. All right, that's what I've got for you, Leo. I hope that this was interesting for you. I hope you're having a good start to your new year already. And I look forward to uh, uh, hearing your stories about this month and checking in with you again in February. Okay, take care.